Hello viewers and a very warm welcome to the brand new edition of the Question Now show from the Parliament House Complex, the show where we bring you important unstart questions asked by the members of the Upper House in the previous sessions of Rajya Sabha. I'm Kriti Mishra and joining me is my colleague Rajat King. Well, thanks Kriti and thanks to our viewers for watching this edition of the show. Well, Rajat, you know Question Now is a very important tool in India's parliamentary democracy because it gives an opportunity to the members of both Houses of Parliament Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha to elicit answers from the government and respective departments. There are different types of questions, the start questions, the unstart questions and also the short notice questions. Now start questions are those questions of which answers are given orally on the floor of the house. Well the other category of the questions broadly speaking is the unstart question where answers are deemed to be considered to be laid on the table of the house at the end of the proceedings of a day. And Rajat, in our show, we filter all the important questions asked by the members of the upper house in the previous sessions and the written replies given by the government and bring for our viewers. So let's commence the show. And the first question in this edition is from member Dharmapuri Srinivas and this question pertains to the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. And the member has inquired about subsidies given by the government in the agriculture sector. Well, giving a detailed reply to the query, the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare said, assistance and benefits is provided to farmers under several categories and the schemes. And these include, starting with, Mission for Integrated Development of Horticulture, Submission on Agriculture Mechanization, Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sichai Yojana, Submission on Seeds and Planting Materials, Integrated Scheme on Agriculture Cooperation, National Subvention Scheme, National Food Security Mission, Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bima Yojana, Agri Clinics and Agribusiness Centers Scheme, Agriculture Technology Management Agency, National Mission for Sus on Sustainable Agriculture, Rain Fed Area and Development, Mission Organic Value Chain Development for Northeastern Region, Pradhan Mantri Kisan Samman Nidhi and Paramparagat Krishi Vikas Yojana. Reply to the supplementary that was asked by the member on the contemplation on the direct benefit transfer in the agriculture sector, the ministry said that direct benefit transfer in schemes like Pradhan Mantri, Kisan Samman Nidhi or PM Kisan has already been adopted by the government. Under PM Kisan scheme, an amount of Rs 6,000 per year is transferred in four monthly instalment of Rs 2,000 directly into the banks of land holding farmers. Now, as on 17th of March 2020, remember the show, this, this question was asked in the previous session. So, replies are confined to the dates ending in March 2020. So, as for reply, as on 17th of March 2020, the financial benefit under the scheme has been transferred to 8 crore 71 lakh 54,788 beneficiaries. Well, moving on to next question that was asked by member El Hanumanthaya from Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. The member sought whether despite stringent provisions in the law, manual scavenging still prevalent, unabated in our country and what is the reaction of government on this and the steps taken to eradicate this most unhumanitarian service. Also, the member asked whether according to a national survey conducted in 18 states, a total of 48,345 manual scavengers have been identified till January 31st, 2020. And why is government not prohibiting employment as manual scavengers and what are the reasons for the same? And lastly, whether service mechanized systems have been introduced for sewage cleaning and what are the details of the same? While giving a detailed reply to this question, the government says that the report regarding the existence of manual scavengers are verified in consultation with the concerned state governments. Now, the state governments have denied existence of manual scavenging. The government goes on to say that the main reason for manual scavenging is the existence of insanitary washrooms which require manual cleaning. Under Swaj Bharat Mission, implemented by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, and the Department of Drinking Water and Sanitation, the insanitary washrooms have been identified and converted into sanitary washrooms to eliminate the need for manual cleaning of toilets. In addition, the Act also provides stringent penalties of imprisonment up to two years of fine of one lakh rupees or both if any person or agency or any person is engaged in manual scavenging. 
Now, manual scavenging is also prohibited under Section 5 of the Prohibition of Employment as Manual Scavengers and the Rehabilitation Act of 2013, which came into effect from 6th of December 2013. No person, local authority or any agency shall engage or employ either directly or indirectly a manual scavenger and every person so engaged or employed shall stand discharged immediately from any such obligation. Now the government also says that several steps have been taken and also national survey has been undertaken to identify all those persons who were engaged as manual scavengers as on 6th of December 2013 to provide rehabilitation benefits which include one-time cash assistance, skill development training, loans at concessional rate, also subsidy to take up alternative employment. Sanitation being a state subject, the local authorities identify and adopt mechanized solutions suitable to the local condition. No data in this regard is maintained by the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. So this question has great humanitarian value and this question was asked during the previous session by member Dr. El Hanumantaya and he joins us through virtual platform on the Question Now show. Dr. Hanumantaya, welcome to Rats Sabha Television and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, madam. So you asked a very pertinent question in the last session of Rajya Sabha about the manual scavengers and whether this practice is still prevalent. What is your take on government's reply? There are reports that people are dying while doing the manual scavenging. Whether it is a small town or a city like Delhi and in so many other parts of the country, the death reports are coming almost every day. And we are now facing a serious challenge. And my concern is, it is most inhuman to have manual scavenging or some human being carrying the excreet of another human being is most inhuman which cannot be heard on the earth. But we are tolerating it in spite of so much of development and other things. We are tolerating it. And this 48,345 manual scavengers which are located by the government survey, whether they have stopped it or whether they have relocated them in any other activity to stop this. See, unless until an assistance is given to these people, they cannot be located in other employment opportunity. It is their livelihood. The most unfortunate thing is, it is because of the livelihood there, those people are doing this kind of job in spite of, they don't even bother to sacrifice their life just because to earn the livelihood. So, government is spending so much of money on scavengers. There is a commission on scavenging and all that. My particular question is, since so many years, irrespective of the governments, government is a government, irrespective of the governments, why a small machine could not be invented or even if it is there, why you cannot purchase? What is the cost of it? Why the government of India has not initiated to purchase and make it compulsory that only the machines should be used and not the human beings? But I wanted to tell you, madam, even now, whether it is central government or it is state governments or the Mahanagara Palikas or the urban bodies, they are not using this kind of machines and no other Palikas have purchased it. If there are one or two, the people use the scavengers, used for manually cleaning this is not stopped. So this should be made a very, very important, very, very important issue in the country and the government should take it very seriously. Whoever allows these kind of manual scavengers should be punished very seriously. Then only there will be a, a problem. There is a provision in the law. According to the law, it says up to two years there is an imprisonment and the fine also. But I have not seen even a one case throughout the country a person, a contractor, who has allowed these manual scavengers to go into the manholes, whether died or working, even if they are randomly caught, nobody is punished, no case is booked. Why is this? Why the government is treating these people as animals? 
not as human beings and nobody is serious to implement the law see if it is a question of upper strata of the society you implement the law very meticulously and which is the lower strata of the society laws are made for book sake laws are just like that going round and nobody is serious whether the government or the implementing body or the contractors or the civic society nobody is serious except one or two people who are working for this kind of thing and they cannot go around the country to book a case and lastly dr hanumantaya what are your suggestions to the government in this regard and my suggestion is whenever these kind of cases are reported with evidence you should book a case and send them to the child as per the provisions of the act then only it will be stopped second thing is people are working inevitably they are not willingly working on these cases i am 100% sure nobody is willing to work with the excrete of the man human being willing to carry willing to do that work but it is inevitable their hungry has pushed them to do that their poverty has pushed them to do that but why can't you stop it by relocating them can we not give them training right sir on that note thank you so much for joining us and giving us those important inputs viewers time for a short break but lots more on the other side stay tuned साथियों ऐसे समय में अफवाहें भी तेजी से फैलती हैं कोई कहता है ये नहीं खाना है वो नहीं करना है कुछ लोग चार नई चीजें लेकर के आ जाएंगे कि ये खाने से कोरोना वायरस से बचा जा सकता है ढीकना करने से बचा जा सकता है मेरी सभी देशवासियों प्रार्थना है मेहरबानी करके इन अफवाहों से भी बचना है आपको कुछ भी लगता है जो भी करे अपने डॉक्टर की सलाह से ही करें हम स्वयं डॉक्टर न बन जाए वायरस से बचना है तो जीवन शैली में कुछ आदतों को शामिल करना बेहद जरूरी है वहीं कुछ ऐसे काम हैं जिन्हें नहीं करना है आइए आपको बताते हैं कोरोना वायरस से बचाव के लिए क्या करें और क्या ना करें कोरोना वायरस सुरक्षा के उपाय क्या करें साफ सफाई पर खास ध्यान दें हाथों को साबुन से नियमित रूप से अच्छे से धोए अल्कोहल युक्त सैनिटाइजर का इस्तेमाल करें छीकने और खांसने के दौरान अपना मुंह ढके इस्तेमाल किए हुए टिश्यू को तुरंत बंद डिब्बे में फेंक दें। घर से बाहर मास्क लगाकर ही निकलें। एक दूसरे से दो गज की दूरी बनाकर रखें। अस्वस्थ महसूस होने पर डॉक्टर से तुरंत परामर्श करें। आरोग्य सेतु ऐप डाउनलोड करें और इसे अपडेट रखें। पौष्टिक आहार ले और अपनी इम्यूनिटी बढ़ाए टोल फ्री नंबर एक शून्य सात पाँच और हेल्पलाइन नंबर शून्य एक एक दो तीन नौ सात आठ शून्य चार छह पर संपर्क करें एन सी ओ वी दो शून्य एक नौ एट दी रेट जी मेल डॉट कॉम पर मेल करके सवाल पूछें कोरोना वायरस सुरक्षा के उपाय क्या नहीं करें खांसी या बुखार होने पर दूसरे व्यक्ति के संपर्क में न आए बिना हाथ धोए अपनी आंख नाक या मुंह ना छुए भीड़ भाड़ वाली जगहों पर जाने से बचे बहुत जरूरी होने पर ही घर से बाहर निकले छिद्र युक्त यानी वॉल्व वाले मास्क का इस्तेमाल ना करें, हाथ मिलाने या गले मिलने से बचे सार्वजनिक स्थानों पर या इधर उधर नहीं थूके तंबाकू उत्पादों का सेवन नहीं करें अप्रत्याशित जानकारी साझा नहीं करें राज्यसभा टीवी की आपसे अपील है कि कोरोना वायरस से बचाव के लिए 
इन नियमों को अपने जीवन का हिस्सा बनाएं खुद की और दूसरों की वायरस से सुरक्षा करें क्योंकि एकजुट होकर हम कोरोना वायरस को हरा सकते हैं Welcome back you're watching the question ask show now let's move on to the next question asked by member prabhakar reddy very ready and this question pertains to the ministry of youth affairs and sports and the member has asked the government about private investment in sports arena and also why the government does not have any policy on public private investment in the field of sports giving a detailed elaborate reply on the query the ministry said that for forging collaborative partnership between the government and the corporates for enhancing sports ecosystem certain corporate houses are bringing soft skills such as management support and staff for harnessing sporting talent for excellence in recent years corporate houses have invested in sports like cricket football hockey badminton kabaddi boxing to organize a sports league in these particular disciplines now government has established national sports development fund to mobilize sport resources from the corporates ngos individuals to augment funds for promotion and development of sports and it adds machine matching uh, contribution in its fund till date contribution of 160.81 crore has been received from various donors out of which 31.85 crores has been contrib contributed from private companies and individuals the policy for collaboration of corporates and individuals for development of sports is working out better than traditional ppp model sports being a state subject the responsibility of promotion and development of sports rests with the state governments the government of india supplements the efforts of the state governments to attain excellence in sports There is a provision under Companies Act 2013 that corporate entity may contribute under social corporate social responsibility in national social sports development fund and is utilized in enhancing the efforts of government by providing the identified promising sports person and team support of modern sports science exposure abroad under experts of respective sports discipline participation in international events and competition now at present the funds contributed by companies under csr to nsdf that is national sports development fund is not sufficient for training and promotion of sports across the country well moving on to next question that was asked member ramna thakur from ministry of shipping the member asked whether it's a fact that government has decided to operate large transport cargo in ganga river in bihar for free transportation by waterways and what are the details of the same and also whether any such work has been done in ganga river that do not cause any inconvenience to the operation of transport cargoes responding to this query the government says that inland waterways authority of india is implementing the jal marg vikas project with technical and financial assistance of the world bank at an estimated cost of 5369 crore rupees for augmentation of navigation capacity on the haldia varanasi stretch of national waterway 1 ganga the major objective of the project is to enable movement of 1500 to 2000 dead weight tonnage vessels projects worth 1800 crore rupees approximately have commenced on the ground the works on national waterway 1 under this particular scheme include construction of multimodal terminals at varanasi sahib ganj and haldia roro terminals navigation lock at farakka development of channel marking system integrated vessel repair and maintenance facility automated information techniques and also differential global positioning system river information system day and night navigation aids slipways bunkering facilities river training and river conservation work and also the ultimate objective of this is to ensure safe shipping and navigation on ganga Let's move on to the last question of this edition of the question hour show asked by member K Ravindra Kumar and this question pertains to the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways. And the member has inquired whether the government has made any assessment regarding reduction of vehicular emission after introducing and implementing various measures to control vehicular emissions which are considered as major pollutants in the country. And he goes on to ask whether the government has any proposal to augment the measures for controlling vehicular emission in the country. Answering to query the ministry said 
that to promote alternate fuels and to bring down pollution levels across the country, the government has taken proactive steps to promote environmental friendly vehicles which are innovative, ushering in proactive use of natural resources. The government has mandated mass emission standard for BS6 vehicles throughout the country with effect from 1st of April 2020 and there would be an expected 50% reduction in PM due to BS6 as compared to BS4 fuels. Now BS6 has 5 times less sulphur content that is 10 ppm as compared to BS4 fuel that is 50 ppm which help in reducing emission from vehicles. Hydrocarbon emissions are expected to be reduced by 72% in BS6, that is 0.13 gram per kWh compared to BS4, which is 0.46 gram per kWh in diesel-based heavy-duty vehicles. Further, government has also issued various notifications specifying mass emission standards for compressed natural gas or the CNG, biodiesel B100, ethanol E85 or E100 or ED. 95 methanol m15 m100 m85 or md95 liquefied natural gas dual fuel that is diesel with compressed natural gas or biocompressed natural gas or liquefied natural gas demethyl ether that is d100 and the government has also mandated mass emission standards for bs6 throughout the country with effect from 1st of april 2020 Further, for promotion of electric vehicles, government has notified for retrofitment of hybrid electric system or electric kit to vehicles and has specified the type approval procedure of electric hybrid vehicles. The government has notified that the registration mark for battery operated vehicles to be in the green background. The government has wide its order 5333E dated 18 October 2018 also granted exemption to battery operated transport vehicles and transport vehicles running on ethanol and methanol fuels from the requirement of permit. The Department of Heavy Industry has notified phase 2 of the FAME that is FAME India scheme fast adoption and manufacturing of electric hybrid vehicles in India. Uh, on 8th of March 2019 with approval of cabinet with an outlay of 10,000 crore for a period of three years commencing 1st of April 2019. Well, that's it. That brings to an end to this edition of Question Hour. Thanks for watching Raj Sabha team. Take care and stay safe.